All right, shalom, shalom to everyone, 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 everyone. Sorry, I apologize for for the lateness. Uh, getting started, ooh, pretty late. Let me see. Oh yeah, we're getting started about 45 minutes late, but it's all right. That's all right. If there, uh, we got a 45 minute delay, but guess what? That don't mean your blessing uh, that God has in store for you is delayed. It is just. Uh, it is about to manifest. It is not delayed. It is not on hold. It is not being held back. It's on the way. It's already already done. It's just waiting to manifest. So, in the meantime, in between time, shalom to each and every one of you all. Hello to my awesome, wonderful, lovely queen, my administrative helpmate. The love of my life, the love in my life, Ms. Xenia Dunn. Thank you for joining me, my love. Uh, yeah, uh, let me see. I have got a new multi-desk uh, set up here and uh, trying to kind of finagle with getting comfortable behind it and trying to reset up everything um, from the way that we had it last week. So. Uh, Y'all just bear with me, please. Uh, if I do a lot of moving around or uh, if I do a lot of uh, sitting back or going forward or whatsoever the case may be, please, y'all just bear with me. Got a new desk going on here that I'm trying to get comfortable and familiar with. Um, so let's get into this. We are still uh, talking about... Uh, the vision for 2019 we're still talking about the uh our year of high expectancy faith we're still talking about high expectancy faith uh and uh this particular lesson would have been uh we took a little sabbatical uh valentine's day so this would have been that valentine day sunday message uh but the lord saw fit and and uh and looking back over that, I uh, I understand a little bit more now uh, than I probably would have if I would have uh, released this lesson into the atmosphere. Tonight's lesson, uh, we are in, this will be faith lesson number nine. Faith lesson number nine. Listen, uh, if you uh, if you like to get, uh, if you'd like to check out all eight of the faith lessons that we have done thus far, please feel free to go to uh, youtube.com forward slash, I think it's The Harvest Broadcast. If you have problems going to it, let me know. Um, you can email me at Harvest Temple Church, at, uh, Harvest Temple Church, no, Harvest Temple Ministries. Ah, my brain is just, it's going, it's going. Uh, you can email me at Harvest Temple Ministries at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any issues with going to our YouTube page, but all of the faith lessons are not only on uh, my Facebook page, but they are also, I try to pin them uh, also to the church page, but you can also check them out uh, on YouTube, uh, the YouTube channel, uh, The Harvest Broadcast. Uh, if you type in high expectancy faith, uh, Pastor K. Harvest Temple Church of Restoration, Harvest Temple Ministries, uh, any of those tags should pull it up. But if you have any issues, please let me know. But all these lessons are on YouTube. Uh, they are on our YouTube channel, The Harvest Broadcast. So please feel free to check them out. Uh, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button so that you can be made aware when we uh prepare to transition over to our YouTube channel and over to the YouTube page, you will be aware and be notified and you will be able to uh, know what's going on and what's happening. Uh, now, in the meantime, let is, let's get into uh, this lesson. If the Lord says the same uh, and delays is coming, I will not be before you long, preferably. Uh, but tonight's lesson, very interesting lesson. Uh, very interesting lesson. Uh, so please, y'all hit that share button uh, and share this with everyone that you know. Share this with your sphere of influence. Share this with your followers. Uh, for those that are new, 
uh, to the Harvest Broadcast. I am Kelvin Dunn, Senior Lead Pastor and Founder of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration right here in Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. Uh, you can contact us at the moment. You can uh, email us at harvesttempleministries at gmail.com. Uh, we are still uh, going over some things, uh, checking out some things as far as website-wise, but by Friday of this week, um, if not any earlier, but Friday at the latest, we will have a definite on where we're going uh, and who we are going with as far as uh, with our uh, website and our webpage. And that should be back and up and going uh, by the end of this week. So y'all keep us in prayer on that. But tonight's lesson, uh, we want to talk about, this is Faith Lesson 9, uh, and we want to talk about, uh, for the sake of the media and broadcasting uh, uh, and those taking notes, we would like to title this lesson, Faith Works by Love. That's why you see the little love down in the corner. Faith works by love. In other words, faith works through love. I said a lot of people didn't know that. A lot of people didn't pick up on that. And we've been talking a lot about high expectancy faith. And I really want to share something with you all in this lesson. And I pray that uh, that it will not fall on deaf ears. It will not fall on deaf ears. As a matter of fact, we declare and decree God's word. God's word says that his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish everything that it has been sent out to do. It will fulfill the purpose that is assigned to it. And so saying that, let us, let us go before the Lord, most gracious and heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for yet another day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you uh, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you have kept us and brought us up until this point of the day, this point of this journey. We thank you. We give you all the honor, glory, and credit. Father, we dare not take any uh, anything lightly that you have done for us by your Holy Spirit. We dare not take any credit for anything that you have done, whether it be small or whether it be big. Father, we, we give you all the honor, glory, and praise. And we thank you for it. Holy Spirit, we ask that you rise up and be mighty in the worshipers right now. I ask that you rise up and be mighty in the intercessors even the more right now. I just thank you right now, Father. I thank you. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that rests, rules, and abides within me. I ask that you uh, touch my lips and let my tongue be like the pen of a ready writer. I ask that you look at my heart and let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I thank you. I bless you. We plead the blood of Yahshua right now over the airwaves, over the audio, the video, uh, over every piece of technical equipment, over each and every person that is watching this broadcast, even right now, and those that watch the replay broadcast later Father, we thank you for it. We ask that you give them ears of the learned. Give them a disciplined, discipled ear. Give them an ear to hear and to understand uh, what you are saying in the spirit realm. And help us, Holy Spirit, to apply it, not just tonight, but help us to apply it to our spiritual journey the rest of the time that we are here on this side of glory, while we are here on this earth. Help us, help us, help us even the more right now. This we ask and pray in the matchless and mighty name of your son, Yeshua the Messiah. And we say, amen, amen, amen. Oh, faith lesson nine. Faith works by love. Faith works by love. Our lesson scripture for tonight will be coming from Galatians chapter 5, very familiar passage of scripture, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 through 6, uh, and the, the main focus of tonight's lesson will come out of verse 6, verse 6 will be our main scriptural lesson, uh, 
And so, as I've said, we're still talking about, we're still in our year of high expectancy faith. And the foundational scripture for our vision and theme for this year comes from Psalms 62, verse 5 and 6 from the Amplified Bible. And it reads and says, My soul wait only upon God and silently submit to him. For my hope and expectations are from him. My hope and expectation are from him. Verse 6 says, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and my fortress. I shall not be moved. That is Psalm 62, 5, and 6. Uh, as we have been talking about high expectancy faith, we have also uh, been using a quote from Mr. Eric Butterworth. Uh, not, I don't think he's related to Mrs. Butterworth, but Eric Butterworth says, and I quote, he says, faith is expectancy. He says, you do not receive what you want. You do not receive what you pray for. Not even what you say you have faith in. Faith is expectancy. But he goes on to say, <clears throat> you will always, not some of the time, not most of the time, not part time, but full time, you will always receive what you actually expect. You will always receive what you actually expect, unquote, from Mr. Eric Butterworth. And we have a we have our daily declaration that we have been saying uh, since the beginning of these faith lessons, uh, and the Lord has given us this daily declaration, and it simply says this. It says, God has created me with faith. <clears throat> and I tell you all, if I have any new viewers on here, uh, I always tell you, uh, make this personal. Make this daily declaration personal where it says God has created me. Put your name in there. Make this personal unto the Lord and say, uh, Kel God has created Kelvin with faith. Like God, I can speak to any situation and expect it to change to what God intended. God has always, God has given me all things and I use faith to apply his gifts to my life. I believe God's word is true and I based my expectations on his faithfulness and it will come to pass. It will come to be. Our lesson scripture for tonight is Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 through 6. Shalom. Thank you all for joining. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 through 6. I'm reading this from the uh, New Living Version. The New Living Version. And uh, the main focus that we will focus on for tonight's lesson will come out of verse 6. And it says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 of the New Life Version, it says, Christ made us free. Stay that way. Do not get chained all over again in the law and its kind of religious worship. Now, let me kind of give you a, a little foundation of what's going on here. Paul is writing to the church at Galatia, uh, he's writing to the Galatian uh, believers, uh, and there seemed to be a little ruckus and a little uproar and a little stirring of false teachers that are going around and trying to convince uh, the believers that they are not saved because they have not been circumcised. This is a Jewish uh, practice that, that they're saying that unless you have been circumcised, you can't claim 
uh, to be saved. You can't claim to be a Christian. You you know, they, they're, they're trying to steer away. Listen, this is still going on even in our day and time. And it ain't going on with circumcision, but it's going on with other things in other areas. There are people that, that have a lot going on uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, various other ways of salvation. No, the Bible says that there's only one way. There's only one way, and that is through Jesus Christ. There's only one way uh, to have a relationship with God, and that is through his son, Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And it goes on to say uh, in verse 2, uh, the apostle Paul says, Listen to me. I, Paul, tell you that if you have the religious acts of becoming a Jew, done on you, talking about circumcision, Christ will be of no use to you at all. Verse 3, I say it again, every man who has the religious act of becoming a Jew done on him must obey every law. If you expect to be made right with God by obeying the law, then you have turned away from Christ and his loving favor. Verse 5, we are waiting for the hope of being made right with God. This will come through the Holy Spirit and by faith. Remember, we're talking about our year of high expectancy faith, and the lesson for tonight, we're talking about uh, faith works by love. Verse 6 says, if we belong to Christ Jesus, it means nothing to have or have not gone through the religious act of becoming a Jew. In other words, it means nothing if you've been circumcised or if you're uncircumcised. If you belong to Christ Jesus, it says that the religious act of becoming a Jew this is basically null and void. But he says, but faith working through love is important. This is our focal verse right here. Verse six, the latter part, it says, but faith works through love. But faith working through love is important. See, faith is the hand that takes the things we need, not the things we want, but the things that we need from God. Everything Jesus purchased for us on the cross at Calvary can be obtained through faith. This includes salvation. This includes healing. This includes fullness of the Spirit. This includes the gifts of the Spirit. This includes the fruit of the Spirit. This also includes victory over the world, victory over the flesh, victory over the devil, and all the powers of darkness are obtained by faith. This lesson tonight, this message is one of the most important principles in the release of our faith. This message, faith works by love. This is one of the most important principles in releasing your faith. Without this principle, Without this quality working in our lives, we will never know what it is to have our faith released effectively. Let me say that again. Without this principle, without getting this knowledge, without getting this understanding, without getting this principle, this quality working in our lives, we will never know. And remember, y'all, y'all know, y'all know how uh, y'all know how I roll. Y'all remember G.I. Joe. 
G.I. Joe said knowing is half the battle. The other half of the battle is putting in is, is putting into practice, making it applicable, using what you know. That is the other half of the battle. So tonight I want to give you the knowledge. And if we will never know what it is to have our faith released effectively without this principle that I am I'm, we're about to share with you all tonight. You see, the quality, the quality that is working in our lives, this quality is found in the book, right here in the book of Galatians, and it is called love. For you see, faith works and operates by love. There's a movie, and I, I just saw the clip and preview of it last night. Uh, I forgot the title of it, and I should have wrote it down. But there's a movie, or there's either a movie or a TV show that's getting ready to come out. Uh, and I watched it, the preview of it. Um, there was a little boy. Uh, he was out with his dog. It was during the winter time. He was walking uh, on, um, it looked like uh, a pond or a lake that had frozen. And as he was walking, all of a sudden, he fell through the ice. And he had been in the freezing water so long that by the time that the rescue squad got out there and pulled him out, uh, he was unresponsive. He, he, was, he was transitioning. And as they got him in the ambulance and his mother jumps in the back, his mother being a woman of faith begins to pray over her child. And as she's praying over her child, by the time they reach the hospital, the young lad is responsive and comes back to life. Most people would say, man, that is high expectancy faith. That is great faith. I would say the same until after I went back and started going through and reading this lesson. And the Holy Spirit showed me, he said, he said, son, faith works and operates by love. If that mother didn't love her child, she didn't have a love for her child to see her child uh, not transition. If she didn't love her child enough to pray and not give up on her child, if she just had the faith and, and, and at that moment when they said, it's nothing else we can do. And if she would have just stopped right there, all hope would have been lost. All hope would have been gone. But her faith, her belief in God, knowing that God could bring him back to, to life, and her love for her child as well as her love for God. Oh, man. Y'all going to see how all this intertwines. Faith works and operates by love. Galatians 5 and 6, it says, If we belong to, to Jesus Christ, it means nothing to have or not to have gone through the religious act. Talking about the circumcision, being circumcised, whether or not you're circumcised or you're not circumcised, uh, uh, according to the, the Jewish religious practice and the religious law. It says, but faith working through love is important. For you see, there is a relationship between faith and love. For the Apostle Paul uh, says, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, talked about the controlling principle of life is faith expressed in love, as it is in the life of Christ. See, the essence of Christianity is not legalism. The essence of Christianity is not legalism but a personal relationship to Jesus Christ, which is characterized by both faith and love. We see this time and time again in the writings of the Apostle Paul throughout the New Testament. Two particular passages uh, is one is Ephesians chapter one, verse 15, where it says, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Notice how faith 
works through love and how important it is. Notice how faith works and operates by love. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, uh, the apostle Paul writes to the church at Ephesus and says that Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? Through faith. That you, and it don't just stop with your faith, but he says that you being rooted and grounded in love. Woo! It ain't just, don't stop at the believing. It don't just stop. But you have to get rooted and grounded in love. Now, when we think of love, there's a lot of things that come to mind. There's a lot of uh, definitions and a lot of words that we could use uh, when we think of love. But the marks of love are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is what we call uh, the love chapter. And these are the characteristics that release the faith in our lives so that we are able to receive what God has for us. Shalom, auntie. Thank you for joining. See, faith in our lives, these are the characteristics that are released so that we are able to receive what God has for us. Some of these things, some of these characteristics are mentioned as followed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. One is long-suffering. Another is kindness. Another is a lack of envy. Another, is, another says that love is not provoked. Love does not incite someone to anger. Love does not call someone forth uh, in feeling or in an action. Love does not, e does not evoke. Love does not stir up someone purposely on a negative note. Love is a self-sacrifice. Love is humility. Love is self-abasement. Love is kindness. Something that this world is missing a lot of. Love is good behavior, unselfishness. There's a lot of selfishness in the world. We need to get back to selflessness. We need to do less of ourselves and look more toward others. Hope. Love believes all things. Love is patient. Love is rejoicing. Love is endurance. For you see, faith is not working for some of us as believers, for some of us who are Christians, see, faith is not, our faith is not working for the simple fact because we do not have a full understanding of what the word of God says about faith. See, for, for years and for times, the Bible, our Bible teachers, the Sunday school teachers, uh, we have said and we continue to say that we must have faith to please God. But some casually pass over the teachings that faith works by love. See, we've been missing an ingredient. We've been missing a step. We've been missing, we've been leaving out faith's partner. We've been leaving it out and we've been talking about and we've been saying it and, and we've been teaching it uh, in Sunday school and Bible study. Uh, we've been talking about it. Yes, Hebrews 11 and 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But what is God? God is love. And faith operates with and by love. So we have been missing an ingredient. We've casually passed over and been teaching that faith 
works. We've been failing to teach that faith works by love and that God is love. See, back when I was coming up, when I was growing up in the church, there were many subjects that I heard preached. Uh, one was the power, that there was. there is power in the blood of Christ. There is power in the blood. Another subject uh, that I've heard uh, that was that was preached and that was taught uh, was this subject of love. Now, mind you, whether you're talking about faith, whether you're talking about love, all of this, all of these subject matters must fit together. See, if we are to live in line, if you are a blood-bought, blood-washed believer in Jesus Christ, if you are totally committed, totally submitted, totally sold out for God, if you are uh, if if you are completely ready and you say that you that your life is in line with God's word, and if we are to say, and if we are not only to be the children of faith, but we must also be love children of a love God. I've been saying this. I've been using this. I'm just waiting. It's going to, uh, sooner or later, this hashtag is going to catch fire. It is going to just, God is going to just, he going to set the nation on fire with this simple hashtag. Hashtag humanity matters. Humanity matters to God. Why? Because God loves humanity. But on the flip side, we are failing to show our love towards God who created humanity. In his image and in his likeness, he created he, them, male and female, and he blessed them and told them to be fruitful and to multiply and to subdue and to have authority here in the earth. But we are so selfish and we are so unkind and everything that is listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the world and society have flipped the script and there are some Christians who uh, we're still, uh, there are some of us who uh, are still adjusting and, 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 and getting it together in our love walk. And there are some of us who don't care to get it together in our love walk, but you're wondering why your faith is not fully functioning. But see, we have to be the love children of a love God. Too many Christians, too many believers do not have any knowledge about walking in love. There is too many Christians, I ain't talking about the world, I'm dealing with believers, blood-bought, blood-washed believers. There are too many Christians who do not have any knowledge about walking in love. And you're wondering why your faith is hindered in certain areas, why uh, uh, things aren't manifesting the way they should. Your love walk, and we need to understand that all facets of it we need to understand all facets of it that the love of God needs to ooze out of us so much that when we walk into a room, people will know that we are living in love. See, faith works by love. If we are going to make our faith house strong, if we're going to have a, a year of high expectancy faith, we must make its foundations strong. And the foundation of faith is love. 
The kingdom of God has been damaged by people who have heard the faith message once and have run off with it without knowing what they were doing or how to use what they had heard. Before long, they came crashing down and didn't understand why. We can make all the confessions we want to. I'm going to pause right there because I'm going to let this sink in. We can make all the confessions that we want to. I need y'all to hear me, believers. I need y'all to hear me. I'm, I, I won't, I'm, 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 just, I'm just a messenger. But this message is going to set some people free. And you, you just like Apostle the Apostle Paul says, uh, you're going to get free and stay free. Some people don't want to hear this, and that's all right too, because what you hear, you are accountable to what you have heard. When you hear this message, when you hear these words, you are accountable. You can't sit before, you can't stand before God and say, I didn't know. Nobody never told me that. Nobody never showed me that. Faith operates and works by love. Faith and love go hand in hand. So we can sit here all day long. We can make all the confessions we want to. We can quote all the Bible, uh, all the scriptures that we want to all day and all night. We can fast, you can pray, and you still won't get anything if you are not walking in love. Let me say that one more time. You can make all the confessions you want to. You can quote all the scripture you want to. You can fast and pray all you want to. But you still will not get anything if you are not walking in love. For you see, the Bible says faith works by love. Galatians 5 and 6. Faith works by love. But if we're not walking in love, our faith won't work. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. In other words, uh, without faith, you can operate in faith, but if you don't have any love, if you don't have a love walk, if you're not demonstrating the agape love of God, then your faith won't work. See, when we check up on ourselves, we will often find certain areas where we are not really walking in love. Hello, somebody. The Bible tells us to let a man examine himself. You got to examine yourself. That You need to take time and check yourself before you wreck yourself. You, you, you have to pull back, stop for a moment. And check your faith walk. Check your love walk. Check your love walk. Check your love walk. How are you handling people? How are you handling uh, individuals? How are you handling loved ones? How are you handling family members? How are you handling co-workers? How are you handling friends? How are you handling those that the Holy Spirit put into your path daily? Check the love walk. You may be believing God for something and in the midst of believing by faith that God is going to show up and do something miraculous in your day. God put somebody in your path. And that you mistreat them. You, you kind of shun them off. And then it doesn't 
work out at that particular time. And God, and you saying, God, what happened? I had the faith. I was believing. I'm ready to throw in the towel. And he shows you a glimpse of that person and tells you, how did you handle them? When I told you, yeah, I knew that. I knew you you, you was down to your last $5. I knew you was down to your last. But in order for me to get the blessing that I needed to give to you, I needed you, I needed to check your love walk to see if you was going to love your neighbor as you love yourself. I was going to see if you could love your enemy, if you could love those who are not of the faith, if you can love those, if you could just be there for this person, if you could just do this when the Holy Spirit prompts you to and you brushed it off. See, we have to check up on ourselves. And see, when we find these areas where we're not really walking in love, then these areas are keeping our faith from operating at full capacity. A faith level of high expectancy, if you will. You see, we have become so accustomed to doing certain things in the natural realm, things such as losing our temper, that we never realize how these things hinder us in the spirit realm. We have to check our self, check your love walk. See, I've learned uh, that if I am to maintain any kind of faith walk, I must put down my carnal nature. See, the secret is letting the love of God work within my spirit. You see, love is more interested in others than in its, itself. Let me say that again. Love is more interested. God is more interested in humanity than in himself. Satan is more interested in himself than he is in humanity because he don't want to go to the pit of hell by himself so he does everything he can to deceive humanity so that he don't have to be there by himself with the angels that got kicked out of heaven with him that, that he got run around the imps that he got run around doing his dirty work and doing doing his his his, his little side side business for him he don't want to be alone. So he is selfish. God does things and God is selfless. For the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved humanity that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That was a selfless act. But Satan performs selfish acts. He only looks out for himself. So when we get so busy unselfishly helping others obtain blessings that we forget about ourselves, we will find honor, success, and promotion for ourselves. So let me go back. Love is more important in others. Love is more concerned about others than it is itself. And when we begin to operate in this realm of love, the agape realm of love, unconditional love, no strings attached, I don't, I'm not doing this because I'm looking to looking for you to give it back to me. If God tells you to be a blessing to somebody, you be a blessing to them. But you don't be a blessing to somebody with the intent saying, "I, right, you know, I, I'll be looking for you, you know, to get get that back from you." That's not a blessing. 
when God blesses us, there's no strings attached. When God blesses us, there's no hiccups, there's no ailments, there's no issues, there's no, there's no pain, there's no sorrow, there's, there's none of that connected to when God blesses us and he blesses us with by using humanity, using other people, sometimes we miss a lot of blessings because of the fact of who the person was that God was using to deliver the blessing. Because you had an issue with the neighbor and God, the Bible says that God has the ability to turn the heart of the king. And God has the ability to turn the heart of your enemy and to, to, to use your enemy to be a blessing to you. But because you're so caught up in the natural, you're so caught up in who it is that you fail to miss the point of who in the spirit realm is trying to get this blessing to you. So when we begin operating in the agape realm of love, we will be blessed when we get so busy unselfishly and we begin helping others obtain blessings that we forget about ourselves. And there we will find honor, success, and promotion for ourselves. The Bible says in Mark chapter 12, verse 31, the word of God instructs us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Mark 12, 31, the Bible says, and instructs us to love our neighbors as ourselves. We cannot really love others until we love ourselves. There's some people who might be out there that will say, oh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to be arrogant. I don't want to sound arrogant uh, when, when it says to, to love my neighbors as I love myself. You know, I, I don't want to sound arrogant. You know, we, we're supposed to be humble. But here is clear in Mark chapter 12, verse 31, that God instructs us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Now, if you are, if you have an issue loving your neighbor, then you might need to do a self-evaluation and a self-check, self-examination, because somewhere, something down in you is causing you not to love yourself the way God wants you to love yourself. Watch this. Though some people may think that this may sound arrogant, and, and, and they might say that, you know, we're supposed to be humble, Yes, uh, we, we are. We're supposed to be humble. But there is a difference between being arrogant and loving ourselves. There is a difference. For you see, a person can be arrogant and still have no love for himself or herself. Let me say that again. A person can be so arrogant that they still do not have any love for them, for himself or for herself, but yet they're still arrogant. See, there is a difference between being arrogant and loving yourself. See, we should know who and what we are in Christ Jesus and what we have because of him. See, if we know these things, if we know who and what we are in Christ, we will realize that we are kings who sit in heavenly places 
with Christ Jesus that will give us a good self-image. See, let me, my married folk, married folk, see, single folk, I'm going to get to you. But married folk, married folk, listen, 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 listen. There are many marriages that are faltering. I need y'all to hear me and hear me good. There are marriages out there that are faltering, falling apart. Simply because two people decided to come together in a covenant agreement. Yet these two people don't love themselves, but are trying to love each other. You wonder why that there is issue and turmoil and, and stuff going on with the marriage in, er in certain areas. It's because, it's because two people who don't love themselves came into a contractual agreement, a covenant agreement, and are trying to love each other and it's hard because you don't even love yourself. And when you think about it, they can't really love their mate because they don't love themselves. And when we make it a point to walk in love, we'll then we will find that the God kind of love, the agape love, will start to spill over into every aspect of our lives. And not only will we reap spiritual benefits, but we will reap natural benefits that we never thought possible. See, if if you if, 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 to my single people all my single ladies all my single men before you decide to get into that covenant with that other person i pray that whoever is counseling you that they will go through this to find out and deal with your love walk. Deal with your love for yourself because if you don't love yourself, and listen, if, if you're thinking loving yourself is being selfish, you're wrong. If you think it's all about me, myself, and I, it's, it's not 50-50. Let me help you out right here. It's not 50-50. It's 100, 100. And if your 50 is lacking in love and her 50 or his 50 lacks in love and y'all try to come together to make it a full 100, it ain't going to work. Because you only, you only putting in half of love for, to somebody else that you haven't even put towards yourself. You understand that? Do the math. 50 50. Yeah, 50 50 makes 100. But I'm only bringing half. So the half that I'm bringing, is it, is it half of the love just for me? And then I won't have love for my spouse? Or is that love for my spouse and I don't have love for myself? It's got to be 100 100. Shalom to you, Christopher. It's got to be 100 100 because you got to bring. Loving yourself to the table. They have to bring loving themselves to the table in order to make this work. See, we will discover that good things are happening to us 
we will discover and see the promotions are coming. You will begin to see the money that you need is coming. You will begin to see that everything that you need, not want, the Bible says that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, I know some people like to go with that King James Version and, and, it, and, it, and King James tells you, uh, uh, my God shall supply all my need. Listen, I got more than one need. I got more than a single need. I have a plurality of needs that I need God to meet. I don't know about you. I can't talk for you. I can't vouch for you. But I have needs that I need God to meet. So as we discover the good things that are happening to us, the promotions that are coming, the money that is needed, everything that we need is coming to us. As we walk, the love walk. And we are not having to make all these good things happen for ourselves, but they are happening automatically. This is where I want to close. If you get nothing else out of tonight's lesson, lesson nine, faith works by love. Cheat. I want you to take this one thing that faith works by love and faith working through love is important. Faith working through love is important. You can have all the faith in the world, but what, how is your, how does your love walk look? Because these two go hand in hand. These two go hand in hand. Listen, I'm Kelvin Dunn, senior lead pastor and founder of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration right here in Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. Listen, my time is up. I thank you all for you all's time. God bless each and every one of you all. In the meantime, in between time, may the Lord watch between me and you while we're absent one from another, but never absent. From his presence, never absent from his eyesight. I say, Shalom Baraka. Peace and blessings be upon each and every one of you. Till the next time on the Harvest Broadcast. The Lord say the same and delay his coming. I will see you all next Sunday, right here, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. I don't know the rest of those time zones, but you can figure them out because I don't know. But I love you all with the love of the Lord, the agape love. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free. Hit us up. Drop us an email at harvesttempleministries at gmail.com. As I said in the beginning of this broadcast, uh, we by the end of this week, Friday, we will know exactly uh, where we're going and have our website back up. That's why I really haven't, I haven't changed my signs. I haven't changed anything on, on our Facebook page. I haven't changed anything because uh, I, I want to keep uh, that domain name. And so we're just kind of, we're working on something. But Friday at the latest, uh, maybe tomorrow at the earliest, we will know. Uh, but it will continue to be uh ChristRestored.net. Uh, that will be the website. But listen, share this with all your, your followers. Share this with your sphere of influence. And as I say, you can also now catch us on our YouTube, uh, our YouTube panel uh, channel, The Harvest Broadcast. Uh, if you have any issues, uh, just type in uh, Pastor K, uh, type in High Expectancy Faith, all of the faith lessons are being downloaded also onto our YouTube channel. So it's out there. Uh, I Like I said, I love each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for joining. Share this. Share this with your spirit of influence. Share this. Get this knowledge out there because there are people who uh, are wondering uh, what's going on with their faith walk and don't realize that they have to line up and check and, and checks and balances. You got to check your love walk. It goes hand in hand. Faith works by love. Faith works through faith. Working through love is important.
I love each and every one of you all. God bless you. God keep you. In the meantime, in between time till the next time we meet again. Shalom. Bye-bye.